All right, so we've, we've got several different use cases for VR. Um, the first being the final polished product, but before we really get to that stage, we get tons of different design models and design options along the way. Our customers want to see different scenarios and understand how things might function if, if they're maybe done a little bit differently than designed. So th this process is going to be the early process we use, the, the quick and dirty, dirty process. Iris VR is an awesome tool for, for doing just that. With Iris, we don't flow through a game engine. Uh, we start um, just with the bare bones model. And I'll show here how simple it is um, to get that model over into virtual reality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right into SketchUp. And we built um, the Minnesota Twins Stadium target field um, several years back. So I'll use that as an example. And I'll, I'll just pretend I'd, um, I'll, we don't have a model of it. So I will jump into the 3D warehouse and go out and grab a model of it. Let's use that one. Looks like a that one. Looks like a pretty clean one. I'll give it a second to download. And there it is, right in SketchUp. I'm gonna clean a couple things up here. Give me one second. There. All right, so there is my model of target field. It's built to a real world scale and is exactly how I want it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and save that out. I can make any manipulations I want in SketchUp, add people, add content, but I will just go ahead and start by saving it out. All right, so there it is saved. I'm going to take a look at it real quick. It's a 12 megabyte file, pretty small file. We've, we've tested extremely large files as well. But now say I'm a customer. Um, I've got this as my design option. Maybe I have four other design options. If I want to look at this in VR, what we do in these early stages is something as simple as this. It's a drag and drop. I hit launch. I'll give it 15 or 20 seconds here. And it's already ready. So I will grab my Vive headset, throw it on. All right, so there is target field in VR. I'm in bird's eye view. So I'm going to get down here on the plaza deck and see what that the entrance into the stadium might feel like. So there I can see target field at full scale. Now what I can do is I can use my controllers to navigate around or I can physically walk to get more finite perspectives on areas that I'm, I'm wanting to look at. Let's go ahead and get up here a little closer to the field. There you go, I can, I can experience the ballpark from up here. Now something else I could do, say maybe I wanted to get right on the field. Start to understand what it's like to be a right-handed batter in the, uh, in the ballpark. So there I am on home plate. And some of the other features we have is we can get in here and Iris has given us some, some pretty nifty um, architectural tools to use. If I wanted to change the time of the day, I can get in here and start to dial the time of the day back. So there I am at about 3 o'clock p.m. on September, um, in September. I can toggle those shadows on and off too. So it gives me the ability to study more than just a fixed environment. A uh, few other tools we have is we can get in here um, and save snapshots. So if I want that snapshot right there, it's saved to my library and now I can go back to my computer and, and share that snapshot. 
or something else we use very frequently is mark the markup tool. Say, for instance, I, I didn't like the material on this wall back here or something like that. I can tag it. Then what I can do is I can navigate up to that area. And I can physically mark it up. So we'll say, say in this instance, maybe I don't like the height of that wall. So I can say bump this wall up by six inches. And those markups then show up in VR so that as I go around and review it as a customer, I can mark up and make changes. All right, so now we're going to take a look at um, a mechanical room. Um, use case on this is, is likely going to be during coordination. Um, typically on a job, we have a lot of coordination meetings to end at the final result. It's going to be a um, well-functioning facility that the facilities people are happy with. So oftentimes what we do is a 3D model review on screen, but ultimately what happens is they don't get the full understanding or a full grasp of um, like something like where a valve might be if, if it's within reach or something like that. So we will take an example right here and drop it in. In this instance, if we wanted to see that in VR, we now have that mechanical room right here. So I'm going to jump right down into the space. And now you can see this mechanical room. I can get a, a full understanding. I can get a full understanding of where things are. So these pipes that are up above me um, or the ductwork, I can understand the actual height of those pipes or the height of the duct ductwork. This is what a what a model looks like typically when we pull it out of Revit. So this is, this is minimal amount of cleanup. Not much work has been done here. It's one of the key things we need to accomplish is making sure that um, when this is reviewed in view, VR, that it's a smooth experience, that there's not any lag, because um, that can make people sick and things like that. So as you can see with this model, even though that's a single surface, um, multiple lines make up that surface. Reason being, when you, when you model in Revit and those walls come together, um, they're produced for, for construction documents. It's, the objective isn't that it be a clean model. So what we do is we go through the model, um, add content, like right here there's a counter missing, and start to clean up the model um, and those, those type of instances where that type of thing happens. So often what that involves is going through and doing some exploding of the model, getting everything into a single group, taking lines like that and getting rid of them so that that's a single plane. Here's another instance where in Revit, this ceiling was modeled um, just as a single plane, but in reality it should have gone up um, above the adjacent lay-in ceiling. So we take instances like that and we fix them to appear as we know they're supposed to appear. So now what I'm left with is an extra line here. So I can take and do a little more exploding, uh, clean up that line segment right there. Um, and you see I, l I lost my wall. The reason being is those aren't in the exact same plane. So it, it might be another method of, of doing that cleanup. Other things that happen is um, naturally you get some stray objects or you get objects w with materials that aren't as they're really called out in the documents or specified. So we take those examples, um, recolorize them, um, and make them look how they are called out in the documents. So this one is supposed to be a gray trim piece We'll dial that back and make it gray. Then ultimately, once we go through that entire cleanup process, we have several b different paths to VR. If we're at the stage in the project where um, it's, it's finalized and um, you know, they're, they're ready for a final review on it, it's going to go into Unity. 
if we're not at that stage, then we'll, we'll take it into a piece of software like Iris VR, um, where we can do a quick review, make manipulations, um, and start to, start to dissect the project, add content, and, and change it to whatever the customer is really envisioning for, for their project. Okay, so our, our medical customers, um, what we hear from them almost every time is, well, the aesthetic is important. What it's really about to them is function. Reason being is the function of these spaces that we build for them um, is what drives patient care. And patient care in a medical um, institution is obviously what it's all about. So in this specific instance, um, when we show the customer this room, in 2D document, with 2D documentation. Um, nurses, doctors, people that aren't really trained to look at 2D documents day in and day out, um, they really don't grasp the, what the space really is. Now we can, we can help that immensely by showing them this on two uh, in 2D on screen, and they can start to get a pretty good idea, um, but the instant we put them in a VR headset um, and kind of immerse them in the space, they, the discussion around how this space is going to function goes in a totally different direction. The reason being is it gives them a real world sense of scale once we immerse them in it. Um, and at the same time, they're able to use their hands to reach out and, and feel that as I stand next to this bed, oh, I can reach the other side of the bed. I can reach this head wall device on the top of the bed. Um, well, at the same time, maybe being able to to instantly turn around and in a second realize where um, something like a monitor and a keyboard is that's, that's critical to taking care of that patient that's in need. Um, so that's, that's a key aspect and, and one of the main benefits of virtual reality in the, uh, for our medical customers.